Welcome to Norway. Without question, this country has some of the most stunning natural beauty our planet has to offer. The people that call it home have fascinating stories to tell, and the rich history can be seen and experienced today through its incredible food, vibrant art scene, and outdoor adventure. In this episode of Dream Jobbing, we're gonna see this country through the lens of Arnold Land, who has been tasked with the job of being an on-assignment photojournalist here in Norway. Dream Jobbing! Throughout this epic adventure, Arnold's gonna be put to the test. He's got personal challenges, but eye-opening experiences. Welcome to Dream Jobbing, and welcome to Norway. What's up, guys? Hi. Hi. I am an accounting major who secretly loves to write. I am a dreamer. I would do this with such passion and heart. Because the only people for me are the mad ones. The ones mad to live. I'm Arnold Land, a 22-year-old anthropology student from the University of Toronto. Although I study anthropology, my dream job is to become a traveling photographer. Innovation Norway and Dream Jobbing have come together to give me that opportunity. This is my story. Arnold beat out hundreds of applicants from around the world at dreamjobbing.com to land his perfect gig. You won! Uh, you're officially winner of the Norway Dream Job. Really? So I'm in New York City and I'm about to head into the Innovation Norway office which I'll get to meet the team and they'll be giving me my assignment and I'll know exactly what I get to do in Norway. I'm excited. Hi! Oh my gosh. Thank you. Your job as a dream jobber for Norway is to really tell your Norway stories through a camera lens, your best photos, and really share that content online with users. And hopefully more North Americans will want to travel to Norway after your trip. Right. He's going to Instagram uh, once a day, uh, at least. And then he's going to also take over our Twitter account. So there's going to be some major online engagement going on. And we're really excited to see that content coming out. No pressure, but. <laughs> How often should I be giving you guys like photos? And the more the better. Once a day, mm -hmm. twice a day, or 10 times. We'll okay. take it. Sweet. We are on our way to the airport, heading to Norway. Um, definitely the highest level of climb that I've ever done for photography. Enjoy your flight. Thank you Thanks so much. Sir. And we're off. I have a big, big responsibility. Like 700,000 people looking at my pictures, but also to deliver because they've given me so much. I wouldn't quite say I feel the weight of Norway on me, but definitely something very, very massive and much bigger than I've ever experienced before. Starting to, I think, just hit me. We're in Oslo. It's happening. This is real. My first impression of Norway when I landed in Oslo, walking around, and everybody just seemed incredibly friendly. Having a good time, really content. You know, I didn't have any moment of anxiety except for being on camera. Coming from an Asian background, a lot of people would kind of discourage against going into the arts because it's not as practical as maybe engineering or the sciences. But at the end of the day, I just really love it. So that's why I want to pursue it and I want to do it. I've just been given my first assignment and it's to photograph the Holman Cullen ski jump. In the summer, it's been turned into a zip line. I love like high adrenaline stuff, so first day in Oslo, I am pumped. I'm nice Arnold. to meet you, Eva. Eva, nice to meet you. Uh, let's get you suited up. So you probably get a maximum speed of uh, 80 kilometers per hour. Wow. We are 62 meters above ground. Wow. You know, you got a saying, uh, as I call it, Birurala. You say it in Norwegian. And that is because in the winter, when we have people jumping out, uh, people are screaming so much, you can hear, hear it all over the town. I 
I want to get the feeling for the viewer that kind of they're on the zip line with me. Uh, so that's a feeling that I wanted to replicate in the picture. The rest of it, I just got to record some video footage. Yeah, that's really fun. If this was like the first thing on my trip and I'm guessing it only gets better from here, then heck yes, I'm excited. When dream jobbing returns, Arnold captures more of Oslo, then gets a true taste of Norway's outdoors, both in the capital and beyond. That's next. Arnold Land has landed his dream job, that of a traveling photojournalist, as he immerses himself in the people and culture of Norway. It was just crazy how much nature there was around the capital city of Oslo. Like, the harbor is just right beside it. Norway like, has such a good balance of nature and city, so like, it's just perfect. Dream jumping! My mind went blank when I jumped, and I love it. It's just so much adrenaline in me, and it's good. I'm hoping as I gain more knowledge and be able to understand the culture better, that my storytelling of Norway will become better as well. So yesterday, we also came across this amazing artist named Radar. My name's Arnold. Yeah, my name is Radar Finsrud. Uh, I'm coming to just shoot pictures for Norway and show off the beauty of Norway. I am, uh, as you can see wow. here, uh, a painter, and uh, also I make sculptures. His workspace reminded me a lot of my room at times. Absolutely chaotic, there were just so many tools everywhere, and like there was no space to even walk. One of the rooms we entered in his museum was a work in progress, and it was absolutely stunning. This <laughs> is incredible. I'm just like so overwhelmed right now. There's posters on like the boards. There's actually a guy just moving in this apartment. Like every single thing in here, it just has so much detail. Like he's put thought into each and every specific piece. Here, everything is an illusion. Nothing here is more away from you than one meter. The whole room was an optical illusion. Beyond the walls was actually many, many, many mirrors that formed different images so we could see beyond to the next city and to the next city and to the next city. He told us that he took him 20 years to sketch the layout for this room, and it took him 10 years to build it. And he was not even done. He said he was not even close to being done. Do you consider this art? For art. me, this is art. Good, okay. So earlier he was saying he doesn't consider everything when that he people creates are art. are coming in, and I said, oh, my hair is going up on my arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get like a I am very satisfied. Satisfied, that's good. Would you have any advice for me as an artist? I think you. To make photos we, we haven't seen before. Okay. Of things we haven't seen before in this way. Maybe go on all four in the forest is a place to start. Mm -hmm. In the end, I realized his advice was just trying to tell me to just be uncomfortable and do new things. Go out of my boundaries and explore the art. Just get a whole different perspective. Now I just got to kind of take this camera out into the world and do whatever with it. Arnold's journey is now taking him to the city of Stavanger on Norway's west coast. We arrived in Stavinia. We left the hotel to go explore the city. I mean, the best kind of adventures are the ones that you don't know where you're going. That's a really good viewing point. I should head up there and take some pictures of the city. I remember what Radar said about kind of looking through the lens from different perspectives. I was kind of walking around the room looking through the lens instead of looking through my eyes. And then I actually found a shot, surprisingly of the rooftops of these houses that ended up being my picture of that day. The Singapore chili crab. Singapore chili crab, yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, just so good. Thank I've, you very much. I've never had crab this good before. No, thank you. Wow, no, thank, thank you. As I was walking around town, I kind of noticed the amount of street art that was just so prevalent everywhere. So I went to meet up with James, who helps run the New Art Festival that happens every single year in Slovenia. For each festival, we have 15 artists in the city at any one time. We rely on the kind of the goodwill of the people mm. who, who live here and work here. 
Martin Watson is one of the eminent Norwegian stencil artists who's kind of taken, taken that Banksy kind of motif and just developed it. And it's Sakarevich here. She incorporated some chairs into the work. It's embracing this European ideology of situationists, which was basically that we, we should be more playful with our urban environment. So this piece is uh, by a well-known uh, Portuguese artist called Vils. He actually takes away, you know, parts of the wall to, to make these reliefs. I, I really love people's portraits, so yeah. I think this is such a cool idea. Kind of revealing the layers, you know, in, in society as well, you know, the people who are behind the scenes. Just like you can see the, the bricks and mortar that are behind the scenes of right. the facade. I think to be a successful photojournalist, you have to be very intrepid, you know, you have to, uh, you have to really uh, get out there and uh, kind of grab, grab the world by the scruff of the neck. Yeah. I would, would consider failure if I did not please all of the partners and all the people who are kind of waiting for my pictures and waiting for the content that I'm supposed to be delivering. So Arnold, you know, we're trying to like mic him up. He won't stop taking photos of stuff. Off me, John. While being respectful, if I need to get the shot I need to get, then everybody needs to get out of my way. That's, that's just how it's going to be. I really want to capture the feelings that I feel when I see something like a huge mountain or a grand ocean. The way that it makes me feel small, the way that it makes me kind of feel overwhelmed, I want to be able to capture all that grandness in one picture. For people, I really want to capture raw emotions and feelings. I want to capture exactly how they felt, the things that they were thinking, and the stories that they're trying to tell. And I want to be able to capture all of that in one frozen frame. Initially, the feeling of all of Norway watching me was kind of pressuring, but kind of as the days went on, I just became more and more excited about getting to know the people and getting to know the culture. And at the end of the day, I knew I was going to deliver good product. Just keep pushing it, like just go hard and essentially not give up. Coming up. So blown away right now. Arnold ventures to Rogaland to try and capture the essence of Norway's world famous pulpit rock. Dream jobber Arnold Land is about to head to Norway's world famous pulpit rock. The pressure is on. Can he capture the beauty with the perfect shot? So today we arrived in Rogaland, Norway. We met up with a local guide. His name was Oscar and then we started hiking for Pulpit Rock. Rogaland, Norway is vastly different from Oslo and Stavenja. Coming from two cities and then being out here on top of the fjords is absolutely breathtaking. I'm just so blown away right now. I just don't have the words to describe how beautiful this is. Before I get caught up in taking pictures, I kind of want to just absorb all of this with my eyes first. Uh, we should sit down and dangle our feet, don't you think? Yeah. At least for me, it kind of you get that sucking sensation here. Oh, yeah, a little bit. It's like, yeah, a little oh, okay, bit. this is pretty high. <laughs> yeah. At first, I wasn't really quite sure kind of how to capture all of this on my camera. I just really wanted to kind of capture the grandness that I feel. There's just this kind of sense of beauty that overwhelms me, and that I'm I feel so small. It's just pure mountains, clouds, forests beautiful fjords, all the best that nature has to offer, kind of put into this almost paint-like scenario for us. I just tried different perspectives from everywhere, kind of climbing up odd places. And then I looked up and I saw this ledge, so I just climbed up and I started taking pictures of the people on Pulpit Rock, plus the scenery around us. So I actually got kind of a grander scheme of things by covering the scenery, plus everybody here taking selfies of themselves. And the combination of clouds, mountains, and water was just like this perfect picture. I think today Norway has changed me in the way that it's just allowed me to see grander things and be able to experience things that are just much bigger than myself. And to be a part of that is really helpful for my photography because it gives me new perspectives. Next, Arnold heads north along Norway's western coast to the beautiful historic city of Bergen. 
which is home to a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you can see here, everything was built by wood. So since Bryggen is a part of the UNESCO World Heritage List, when they renovate here, they have to use the tools they used back in those days, oh. and so everything has to be accurate. After crisscrossing Norway by air and water, Arnold now heads to Flam by scenic rail. The first train we took was a pretty modern train, and on the way we just saw mind-blowing scenery, just crystal clear reflections in the water, and we began to see snow. This is the stuff that you can't get even if you look for it. After a layover, we got on the second train, and it was older, it was more quaint. This time we went through amazing waterfalls, it was beautiful, and then we arrived in Flam, and we stepped off the train and looked up, it was absolutely amazing. The clouds were so close to us and there were waterfalls everywhere. It was basically like we were in just like a children's fairy tale book or like a movie. It was almost like this heaven meets earth kind of feeling, just pure magic. So Maritha took us on this hike up to this farm in the middle of seemingly nowhere almost on this mountain. Um, landscapes of grass and waterfalls, kind of like a quaint little place. So we climbed the hill and just right in front of us was this really cute farm with a bunch of goats. Hi. Hi, come on in. Hi, I'm Arnold. Hi Arnold, I'm on the cutting. On the cutting. Welcome. And Karen was just so warm. She was so welcoming and she kind of went through the whole process of how they make brown cheese. We make cheese the, the really traditional way. So we stir it with this tvora, it's called. Soft. It's just like caramel. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Not like a cheese at all. No, yeah. No. So afterwards, we had a homemade lunch with the freshest ingredients, and it was just so delicious. When Dream Jobbing returns, Arnold is put to a test. Run, run, run! On live TV, and then climbs Europe's largest mainland glacier. That's next. On one of his last days dream jobbing as a traveling photojournalist in Norway, Arnold is invited on a live TV show for the NRK Network. It's a national television show that happens in the summer where they take this giant ship and travel through Norway, stopping at different cities each day to film an episode. So they invited me to be on the show to kind of talk about my experience as a photojournalist in Norway. I was actually okay until now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Lan, welcome to Songdal. Thank you so much, I'm happy to be here. That's good. Uh, why did you want to go on this mission in uh, Norway to take photographs? Um, my dream ever since I picked up a camera has always been to photograph and I wanted to be a traveling photographer, so... Are you ready for a mission here in uh, Songdal? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, let's give you 20 seconds, 20 minutes, sorry, 20 minutes <laughs> to capture the most beautiful photographs in Songdal. Okay, let's do it. Very good. Run, run, run. Yeah. This assignment was actually incredibly stressful because in a whole day of traveling, I think I only get one to two really, really good shots that I'm satisfied with. But now I'm supposed to get pictures in 20 minutes that I'm supposed to show on live television to over 500,000 people. Not knowing where to take pictures and just like not knowing what to capture or like, uh, like, that's crazy. Arnold is back. You have been now out in Songdal to take pictures. Let's just go ahead and look at them. The first picture that you took, the church, yes. tell us about it. I wanted to take it from a perspective kind of lower, just to be able to see kind of how grand the whole church is. And this is uh, the second one. I just went down the harbor and I just wanted to kind of show the great contrast between just the water, the beautiful mountains, and then the little town right beside it. And now that I've been here kind of learning about the history, going to different places, um, my idea of Norway has definitely changed now. It's so much more than just trolls and Vikings and beautiful fjords. Oh no, I thank you so much for being thank here so uh, much with for us having uh, tonight. Me. And uh, good luck on your uh, mission in Norway. I was pretty happy with the photos I took. I'm, I'm pretty surprised with the photos I took actually. The size of the glacier is the size of Los Angeles, the city. Like, that's absolutely crazy. So we got to the glaciers and we met our guide, Mons. So the old snow gets compressed 
for many years oh, until it's going to start growing. And you said this, this glacier started 4,000 years ago. 4,000 BC. 4,000 BC. Okay. Yeah. Good water, clear water. There's no particles and stuff in it, no bacteria. It was just like the most delicious water I've ever tasted. We had to wear like these claw shoes that are called tampons. <laughs> it's kind of working like a big piece of sandpaper on top of the rock, shaping the landscape. So actually most of Norway is shaped by the glacier. Right now, I'm just not super happy with the glacier because it's kind of like a massive piece of ice. It's kind of hard to capture this whole thing in, just in one shot. Like it looks huge, but on camera, it just looks like a piece of white, like nothing. I don't think I was able to completely grasp the whole glacier in one picture, but I think I came up with some pretty good pictures. <laughs> For his final day, Arnold is invited to a local family's cottage about an hour south of the capital Oslo. We just arrived to this little fishing house on an island, and it's amazing. And now we're about to go do some spear fishing, try to catch some mussels. So Christian and Camilla had these two adorable children, Bol and Blanca. When we got there, they were catching crabs with mussels. And Bol would crush mussels with this rock, and then Blanca would take it and then drop it into the waters, and then they would just kind of wait for crabs to bite it. They would pull them up, and then Blanca would put it in her little net, and put in a bucket, which was just the most adorable thing ever. When I saw her holding this snack, I just kind of imagined this like girl in remote like fishing village, just like waiting for the catch of the day. Seeing her catching crabs just like so fearlessly, this is like what I want to capture. I told her to stand at the edge of the dock. I told her to stand very still, and after five, six shots, I got the shot that I wanted. We caught some mussels, some oysters, Thank you so much. Salut. So nice to be here. Skull. 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 Nice having you in our Thank area. Guys. Coming from a Chinese background, I have a huge family back in China, and I really, really miss a big family kind of gathering. And I kind of was able to get that in Norway with these essentially strangers that I met. There were big smiles around the table. At that moment, I think I'll forever treasure. I don't feel like I can ever take enough photos or write enough thank yous to the people of Norway for what they've done for me. One thing that I want to bring back from Norway is to just tell people to go for it because the experience in the end is always going to be grand. The things I've got to experience are going to forever be a part of me. Norway has a very special place in my heart. <laughs>